Greetings and welcome to the next Hourling Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey, and tonight I'm driving this bus. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about audiobooks. This week um, I was doing my taxes, and for the first time ever, audiobooks was my number one earner this year. Um, I have uh, come to um, really love um, producing everything in audio. I do all my novels in audio. I have spread out to doing uh, my short stories in audio. And um, my current uh, audio production project is for one of the anthologies that I produced even. Um, they, they have been such a good sound moneymaker for me. Uh, tonight we wanted to talk about exactly how that all happened. Um, and, uh, I guess I'll start with this story from the beginning when, uh, my first novel came out, um, I had no idea what I was doing, just completely making it up as I go along. And, um, a colleague I knew at work who was a published author, he, he said to me, dude, you got to get this book in audio. He had read my novel and said, uh, you know, this would be great in audio. So I go, well, how the hell do you do that? And um, he introduced me to ACX.com. Um, this is a whole, wholly owned subsidiary for Amazon. And basically it works like a dating service. You know, you put your, uh, the demographics for your book out there, you put the cover, you put a synopsis, you put some metadata up and you put a, a little five minute uh, audition script. Um, it, it tell, says that you should pick a section where it, um, you know, I picked a section where it had emotion, it had multiple character voices, um, as well as male and female voices. And, um, once you get all that demographics in, you press go and you start to get auditions and you let it simmer for a few weeks and you collect the auditions. The last book I put up. I got over a hundred auditions that I had to listen to. And when you get that many, you can really pick the best of, and it, and it works out really good. So what do you look for? I and mean, what did you, how did you narrow that down? Well, basically the interface itself has the audition recordings come in. And are you able to say whether you want a male or female voice? Oh, uh, yeah. In demographics, you tell the kind of voice, the age of the narrator, mm -hmm. you tell the, the kind. Do you, do you want it to be mysterious? Do you want it to be, um, mm -hmm. oh, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of radio buttons that you can twist on there so that the actual narrators that will send you their auditions will um, do it the way you want. And uh, so they come in and you listen to them. And um, it has an email interface within it also. And it's got a really nice organized way where you can say, um, oh, I really like this one. I'm gonna save this one. Uh, this, this guy's the best one so far. And so what I would do, there's some that are obviously not right fits. You know, I, I always create a form letter that says, hey, thanks for the audition. Um, um, I'll be selecting the final candidate on such and such a date, and um, you can send it. You can send it to them, and um, uh, then basically um, keep listening for the auditions. And because you can favorite them, you can pick you know the ten favorite ones as you go. And as you get them, especially when you get like a hundred, um, you bubble up to the top. Okay, this guy's the one to beat. So you play a new one and you'll compare it to your favorite, your current favorite. And it, it's easy to do a bubble sort on that. So in if, the you, end, if, if you, you're really like down, down to like five or so, can you ask them to read a little more? Oh, uh, you can. You can actually send them additional sections. Um, they will usually do it for you. You know, do, do an additional uh, read. There's also... Um, a section in the interface where you put the five minute thing and then you can also upload a longer audition 
um, that can that's in a Word document or a PDF. That that's an optional for them. And it's optional. Mm -hmm. And so fact, you recommend that sometimes, depending on how long the piece is, they don't even read the whole piece. You know, they'll just stop at a logical point and stuff. So you recommend that site over good old fashioned Craigslist? Good old fashioned what? Craigslist. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is where the pros hang out. This yeah. is how they, yeah. you know, how they find work. It's how are they, they agented? Um, yes, many of them are. Wow. So um, do you have to work through their agent? You don't. You actually work through the site. Okay. On their end, I've done it both ways. I've worked with people that have producers that work with them. And um, you sign a contract with the, the producer. Now, it could be a separate person. It could be the narrator themselves. I, um, I've done both ways. Um, hmm. Interesting. Another set of granularity is there's two kinds of contracts you can do. There is... Um, a per finished hour rate, which uh, basically you pay them, if your book is say 10 hours long, you pay them uh, a per finished hour rate of anywhere from $50 an hour to $1,000 an hour, or even higher, depending on who your talent is that you get. Um, how do you judge that? So for instance, if you're doing a short story or a novelette, how, how do you judge how many hours it's likely to be? The interface tells you, you tell it how many words the book is, and it has, and for the 11 projects that I have done, has been within 2% of the estimate. Um, mm. You can actually tell your narrators, look, I prefer a little slower cadence for, for the book. And if you, if you actually encourage slower uh, talking, for instance. Price goes up. It'll, it'll make it longer, and um, but you pay more for more finished hours. Um, mm -hmm. But it all depends on the narrator. You definitely don't want one that rushes. That's the worst kind of narrator. It cracks me up how many people, you know, especially in COVID time. I said, that's why I think there's so many. I got so many auditions for the last book. I think that there's a lot of people, you know, had discovered, hey, I can do recording at home and uh, get paid and uh, uh, do it while COVID is going. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, th I think that's a thing. That's a now, what do you guys all think about uh, authors recording the audiobook of their own book? Funny you should ask. D David made a face. <laughs> I, uh, I actually have enjoyed lots of authors who read their own work. Stephen King, for instance, he reads a lot of his own book, but he's Stephen King. Um, right. I have... I have done it. I have uh, broke that ice by uh, doing several uh, of my short stories. I've done mm -hmm. short stories from, you know, 10 minutes long to over an hour long. And it's really interesting. Um, I uh, uh, was considering doing it and I didn't know how to do it. And I had a summer intern one summer who set me up a home studio. It was it was awesome. He showed me how to use Audacity, which is a recording software and editing software so that you can record it yourself. Um, I got all set up with the teleprompter software, which is absolutely required because not only does it make it easy for you to read it, it slows you down. Right. <laughs> you can set the pace that it goes. So it's really great stuff. So I've done, I've actually uh, done multiple, uh, um, uh, short stories that I have on my website for free. See, I can't stand the sound of my voice on record. Like, I never watch these podcasts. So I couldn't imagine doing my own book. That'd be like the worst torture. Yeah, I would never do a book. Uh, I'm convinced that the best use of my time as a writer is writing, especially since I have a day job that takes up a, a fair amount of time. Yeah. However, I would consider doing a short story or, uh, or a novelette. Uh, you know, an hour's worth of time I could I could do. Um, and in fact, as, as an author, you often end up doing readings at conventions. Right. So to me, it's a good skill to have. Mm. Yeah, uh -huh. and I had decided I was going to create freebies, you know, mm. short story read by the author. And um, I, it, because I was able to edit, 
which is critical because I, I can't believe how often I say, um, um, it's, I just, you just did it. And I just did it. <laughs> it's uh, ridiculous, but you can edit that stuff out very easily within an interface. But that's the weird thing. When you're, when you're hiring a narrator, you're paying them per finished hour. And in talking to the professional narrators that I've worked with, it takes about six hours of work to generate one hour of finished mm -hmm. audio. And that's because they have to edit and, and re-record and edit again and re-record um, um, often. Uh, now, I, I will but, say from, from my point of view, it's actually interesting case because Marty, you may remember, I did approach you about doing the narration for my own story in your anthology, The Witness uh, Paradox. Um, now, of course, I trust Marty and I know he's going to hire a great narrator for that. But the reason is because I'm an aspiring voice actor. What you should do, man, you should actually record it because yeah. he actually also recorded um, the writer's group. I don't know if you guys remember this short story. But it's a short time travel story that I wrote. Mm -hmm. I recorded it myself. I'm Great. considering adding that as an extra feature on the audiobook. You know. Well, then I shall. You should. You should record it, man. I and, will find um, a good studio to do it in, and or, you know, so I will make the nice sound isolation in my house. Don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to make it. I will do well, it. Well, I found in my house it was really cracking me up when I was trying to do it initially because I don't have a. I don't have a studio. Mm. The ambient noise was crazy because mm. I told you about the intern that was set me up. He uh, he uh, recommended a really great headset microphone that was not omnidirectional. It is specifically right. designed. It's kind of I don't know if it's a gamer's headset mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You see people on podcasts wearing them. Mm -hmm. um, but I got I got a set of those. And that was a lot better. But the weird thing was the mic was still really sensitive and you'd hear my cat meow, <laughs> stuff like that. You'd have to edit that stuff out. It's right. pretty funny. So, you, you know, have a quiet room. As quiet long room. as the ambient sound is low, you don't have to like be in a closet that's got quilts on all the walls and stuff like that, which is yeah. what some people do. I do have a good mic for that too. So it's gonna happen, my friend. But do there is a priority. I do have to write that book. <laughs> Jeffrey, so, you want to do it for yourself or for other people's books? I would be happy to do it for other people's books. And I, in fact, I can be a little bit like one of my favorite audiobook authors, Jim Dale, because of course I can do the accents. In fact, I just, uh, last week, I just did a uh, read through of a script. And of course I did one person that was from Scotland and I did another person that was from the South. And, well, you know, go, I, ahead. go ahead and record the book. And yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get it in there. We know Jeffrey likes that sense. Well, my yeah. two experiences with audiobooks, um, you know, one was traditional. My book was with St. Martin's Press. The other one was self-published. And the traditional one, you know, like, like a handful of other things with traditional publication, uh, I didn't have any say in it. Uh, you know, they, they sought out the, the, uh, the talent that they felt matched the book the best. Uh, they looked for, you know, a youthful, kind of energetic voice for YA. Um, she ended up being a wonderful, uh, talented actress and a wonderful person who uh, we're Facebook friends now. Her name is Teresa Plummer. And she's mm -hmm. done a bunch of other ones. But I have not listened to that because it's the same thing for me as listening to my own voice. I, mm -hmm. I, I feel some sort of self-consciousness, I don't know, about listening to my audiobook of my book. It's, it's a weird thing. I'm, I'm going to have to do it. I have to listen to it at some point. Um, but uh, the, my other experience has been uh, with someone sort of like you, Jeffrey, who is just starting out, really wants to uh, break in to the, the audiobook or the voice acting world. Her name is Terry Williams, and she just has a very poetic, soft, beautiful voice. And she's a member of one of my writing groups. So um, we kind of did a deal where she's going to, uh, she didn't charge me, and she's going to do the audiobook for. Uh, American Boy, which is my self-published book uh, about my my late brother who died of opioid addiction. So we we raise a lot of money with that book to send people to rehab, get people back on their feet. So we're really happy that she donated her time to that. And because audiobook is audiobooks are such a big thing now, 
Um, I, really, I, I know so many people that that prefer audiobooks over anything physical. Um, we're really hoping that it brings in some new sales. So it's a great next step for your book. Like if you already have published your soft cover and you did a launch with that, you did a media run with that, it's not a bad idea to do an audiobook so you can relaunch your book, have something new to talk about to sell more. Well, it's definitely where I'm intending to go, with, uh, especially uh, starting off with some of my novelettes. So another question, Marty. Um, does Amazon and uh, ACX.com, do they link them up to uh, the print edition or the ebook edition? So for instance, if you're listening in your car on the audio, can you then pick it up on the Kindle in the same place? Or how does, how does that work? It automatically queues up. In fact, they often have deals. You go out and buy the Kindle edition, and you get a discount for the audio edition. And um, author still gets the same royalties as if they bought both. So that's awesome. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And then you go back and forth and it um, um, queues up. It's really cool. It also, it makes it nice that you do the audio edition and it um, lives right, right in the same uh, book entry as your Kindle edition, as your paperback edition, as your hardcover edition. So they share um, uh, reviews as well. Yeah. Well, that is very nice. Amazon. The Let interesting thing is too, if someone would have purchased it directly from Audible, which is another option, or mm -hmm. from iTunes, um, they have um, reviews there as well. So um, it's review or Emma, all of those so, places. So I'm curious now, if, if I get, uh, Virtues of the Vicious audiobook, and then I get Virtues of the Vic Vicious Kindle book. Do they have whisper sync? Like if I read somewhat in the Kindle, and then will it sync up with the audiobook? Yes, exactly. That Very was cool. the question that I just asked a minute yeah. ago. That's free. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing technology. It really is mm -hmm. crazy. Well, uh, so, cool. how much, you know, ballpark should it, an author expect to pay for a book? you know, maybe in the 90,000 word range? 90,000 words will sort out to be about 10 hours or so. Mm -hmm. um, so the, it all depends on the kind of uh, voice narrator you're looking for. They all have different rates? Yeah, they all have different rates. You'll get auditions based on the rate that you post. Yeah. Um, I... Um, I have used, you know, uh, narrators for $50 an hour, um, not, never for a novel, um, and I've used narrators for $300 an hour. Um, they're usually worth it if you do it for, for more. Um, the last novel that I published, um, I actually did spend a lot of extra money because I hired two narrators one male, one female. And so the book reads uh, a lot more like uh, radio theater than just uh, uh, just an audio book. It awesome. came out so good, I can't believe it. It was really great. Um, so does that include editing, that price? Yes, I, they, it's out of their end for a, a per finished hour uh, rate. Uh, they have to do all the studio time, all the recording, all the post uh, production editing and posting. And um, the author gets to review chapter by chapter every audio section. You can make corrections uh, for them. Wow. And, um, uh, yeah. yeah. There is an approval button. Make sure end. pronunciations are okay and all that. Right. So make sure you get names right, get pronunciations of stuff right. Um, you can, you know, find, they say stuff wrong sometimes. Um, sometimes they repeat sentences. Um, oh. It's actually really interesting the way that it works because when they're actually recording it, they will read a line and if they sense that they made a mistake, they will just pause and then read the line again and then cut out the one they didn't like. Oh, interesting. And um, it, sometimes they miss the cutting out of the one they didn't like. Part. Oh, I see. It's a very yeah, common uh, uh, catch that you can make. So as an author, you have to listen to them in, right. in very, very close detail. 
And um, I actually enjoy doing that because I, I forget about being the author of the book and I, it's like I'm enjoying it for the first time since I finished writing the damn thing. I remember there was one audiobook I listened to and Will Wheaton, the Will Wheaton was reading it. And bless you, Will Wheaton, you're awesome. But you did mess up one word. And I was wondering now, did the author mess it up or did Will mess it up? And yeah, Will, okay. I know you're a busy guy. It happens, but yeah, it was Will. And that can happen. So that's why an author should re review the, the audiobook. Now, here's a question. Um, sometimes I'll write things, you know, because I, I often write in contemporary. So sometimes I'll write like a text message that maybe is just like, uh, like a semicolon and and a parentheses, like a smiley face. Mm. How would a, how would an audio reader read that visual motif in the book? They will do it any way you want, mm -hmm. as the author. You know, they, emoji, hey, how do you want me to read this? I get I would get those kind of emails all the time. Really? Especially with science fiction, you know, yes. if you're doing planet names that are kind of esoteric <laughs> or stuff like that, it's a, uh, um, uh, it's a, they, if they're really professional, they want to get it right. In fact, um, the really uh, most professional ones I've worked with um, often will send you a list. How do you want me to pronounce this? And mm. they want you to record it and send them an attachment with an mp3. And okay, so I would say that that's, that's all good, but I do think that there are disadvantages to audiobook because of this, because I'm thinking more about like some style, stylistic things I do in my writing. Um, like even this one sentence I wrote where I did, you know, a hyphen and then a bunch of exclamation points and another hyphen, like when, when the character was narrating and was very really excited about something. Um, it, it, was, you know, it was a joke. Um, and I, don't, I can't think of any way that the the reader could read that where the joke would fall the same way. So I would just say that it's interesting to me point out that there are going to be some non-workaroundable disadvantages to audiobook where you can't achieve the exact same uh, emotion or style or uh, even humor. But there is a way around that. Many audiobooks today will include a PDF. A, what? That, a PDF, a PDF that you can look at. And in fact, the Audible app. Yeah, I'm just saying if no one, look at if someone is whistling in the car, you know, they're going to they're miss well, it. Well, yeah, you'll have to remember. But I mean, many an audio book, like reading, uh, uh, you know, Randall Monroe's uh, book, uh, whatever it was, What If, I believe it was. And yeah, there's a lot of diagrams that he has that he just cannot, the, the author cannot read. So you drive the car, and then you try to remember which ones, and then you look at the pictures, or you look at the pictures first, and then you listen to the book, and you keep them in memory. Will they sometimes, like, you know when you're writing dialogue, and there's a new paragraph for every new person speaking? And that, that is, that you, can, you can drop a bunch of he said, she said, because you can see that it's a new person speaking. I mean, you can't drop all of them, but you, you can get away with a few of them. Will, will an audio reader add in a he said or she said? to make it clear because a reader can't see that they're jumping. Uh, you know, uh, that would be a bigger issue if you have a single narrator. If yeah. you mm -hmm. had um, a single narrator that um, does a really good job at different voices, right. uh, like the narr narrator I had for uh, Still Falling, um, he did really good voice differentiation, particularly mm -hmm. uh, female voices. and. Mm -hmm. He actually left out a lot of, you know, he said, she said, because if there's too much of that in right. an audiobook, it can be really distracting. Mm -hmm. In fact, as you read that, it's okay to have them in there because the mind just jumps over them. Mm. Um, I will say as an author, I generally avoid the he said, she says, and I try to do context textual descriptions with uh, dialogue. Yeah, action tags are the best. Yeah, and, and I will say, sorry, reader of my story. That's what I did, but I do trust him because I will say this. When Marty told me the guy that was going to do the story from The Witness Paradox, and he said he was from Canada, oh, that's great, you know, because I used to live in Canada. That's the whole reason why it takes place in Montreal. -y. And so, of course, I knew he could Not do that it with that accent. <laughs> Although I have, I have uh, heard him say 
about a couple times. Oh, yeah, I know what that's all about. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay with me. He's a good narrator. Yeah. So, so I guess I had kind of the opposite question from, from Shay in that uh, do you insist that the, uh, the, the voice talent follow the text exactly or do you allow them to kind of streamline it a little bit? Uh, based I, on I don't. In fact, I make it clear if you find typos, if you, you know, if something is really awkward, ask me and we can uh, subtly change it to make it clearer. That's fine with me. Um, okay, but you don't give them that latitude themselves. No, they they usually they won't make executive decisions, really. I mean, they're not going to do any contextual change of your stuff. They will just read it as dumb as it is. Um, that's fine. But if you have a good relationship with your narrator, they'll be honest with you and they'll say, "Hey, look, you know who there? I've had an issue where." I did not use enough dialogue tags, for instance. Mm. And it was confused who was saying this sentence. And um, I love the fact that they um, would come to me and ask. Mm. Um, yeah, fact, it's probably clear on the page where you can see the alternating paragraphs, but it might not have been clear when they were reading it. Right. You see something like that. In fact, the duet that I used for Shadows of the Sentinel they had it set up so that they could, would do their recordings sessions live using Discord. And I could participate. And so I would say for three quarters of that novel, I was basically in the booth with them. Um, that would, and then they could stop and they could say, Marty, what the hell? What, how, how am I supposed to say this? Or what, what the hell does this mean? You really have more time than I do. Well, yeah. and the interesting thing That's about that job. is they were using Discord because one of the narrators lived in Canada and one of the narrators lived in North Carolina. So mm -hmm. Discord's um, great about that. Discord and Slack. Yeah, Discord. And they had each had their own recording studio, and their tracks were recorded independently and assembled after the fact. But it was really interesting. You'd see them in there, in their, in their booth, in their real booth with all the dimpled soundproofing and all that, and their professional microphones and crap. But they would see me, just this knucklehead, with, with, you know, in my office. Um, but it was very useful and saved them a metric ton of time from mm -hmm. having to say, okay, I'm going to circle back and set a, you know, marker here and re-record this after the fact, after I get this question answered. That um, it's good for them because it saves them a lot more time. I liked it just because it was fun. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. great being, you know, yeah, watching yeah. the sausage get made. I, I love that. Okay. You know, I will say this, uh, you know, in terms of audio, I am part of book clubs, a number of, uh, I run a few books, book clubs, actually. And, you know, one of the things is that I, it's a democracy, of course, but one of the, my voting standards is if there's no audiobook, vote it down. That's personally me because I do a lot of readings in audiobooks. In fact, I don't like to read uh, the traditional way because I get eye strain and all that, especially now that I really need bifocals, but I refuse to buy them. Uh, so audiobooks are my preferred thing, even though I'm not driving. But when I had that 70 mile a day commute, I read a lot of audiobooks. I finished two books, uh, two nonfiction books a, a, week, uh, a month. You read a lot of audiobooks? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I read to them, but yeah. <laughs> It's all good. Yeah, I still do probably, you know, eight audiobooks a month, probably. Wow. Easy. Way more than me. The ones I'm doing are typically dense nonfiction ones. So I was thinking about adopting audiobooks when I had a commute, but uh, mm -hmm. even before uh, COVID-19, my, my commute with my new job was only uh, about 10 minutes. And, and now it's down to uh, walking into the basement. Right. You know, my commute with my new job, it's about five minutes once I start going to a job. So, 
Anything else? Once again, you can go to my website, you know, as a uh, pure mercenary uh, um, crass marketing moment, uh, go to my website mm. and there is um, a dozen free audiobooks. Um, there's also um, all of my novels are currently in uh, audio. Enjoy those. Um, some of them are currently on sale. I should have found out before this podcast started which ones they were. But because it doesn't air at the same time, the sale would probably be over. So it's just as well. Hey, yeah. ASMR is a big thing right now. So if we're, if we're putting you to sleep, yeah. um, happy dreams. Maybe you can buy our audiobook. It'll be, it'll be helpful as well. Enjoy the yeah, you know, there's there's a lot to be said for audiobooks and um, ASMR. It's a big thing. I, I I buy them. I uh, I have an Audible subscription. I know Jeffrey does. Oh yeah, I've and, bought uh, some of your books I, on Audible. I enjoy like it, it's not even like you know it's not a diss to the author. I enjoy falling asleep to audiobooks. So yeah. no, I mean if that's what you do, I do them for content. So I mean. If I miss something, I'll go back. And if I went to sleep, I won't know it if I start at the beginning of the chapter or the end. So I'll listen to the whole chapter again, which can get kind of frustrating. So I typically do not do that. So as, as you guys start down the path to doing audio books, um, um, it's, I'm happy to help you guys, you know, um, fight your way through that jungle because I didn't have anybody to, you know, advise me on anything. And I think that it's really important wherever there's contracts involved that you actually, you know, get advice. Um, somebody that's done it before is always uh, really good to get advice from. And um, also recording them. Having done it myself, that's a, yeah. um, a viable thing. Things, you know, there's like quality minimums that ACX requires or they'll just clean reject it. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh man, I got to completely re-record that at um, uh, a better rate, something like that. Um, so uh, it's, I'm looking forward to you guys getting your stuff in audio. That's going to be cool. Me too. In fact, Shay, I didn't know your book was in audio. It is. Go buy it. I'm going to have to go buy it. I will say that the is last. Is Audible or does it use a different service? Oh, it's on Audible, but I actually was also mailed a CD version of it, like really old school. Hey. <laughs> so yeah if you learn one thing from this podcast it's this you can have your paperback you can have your hardcover you can have your kindle but you're not done until you have your audio book <laughs> well uh, i think from a marketing perspective it's it's all as many revenue streams as you can have for one piece of content i think absolutely. you're welcome. right right, right. i mean it is definitely worth doing it because it's additional revenue for you know, a minimal amount of extra work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not zero work, but uh -huh. it's, and there's uh, investment. it's definitely, you already have the material. And Wait, this, this is my last question. What should you price your audiobook at, Marty? Um, well, it depends on how long it is. I, I usually start at $21.99. I make it mm. pretty much basically the same cover price as the, as the hardcover. Yeah. I've noticed audio is more expensive. For a novel. For a novel. For a novel. Victories and novelettes. And now I have discovered, even though I do that, it, it'll go out there and be for sale for a while. Um, uh, on its initial debut, that's when you sell the most books, actually. Mm -hmm. But after a while, there's some algorithm that Audible and Amazon uses. Once it starts leveling down or something, they will give a, pr a promotion. Mm -hmm. They don't even ask you. Suddenly your book's mm -hmm. seven fifty instead of right. twenty one ninety nine. Right. The weird thing is, is you still get the same royalty, you oh, know. Wow. And for them, it's just moving electrons around. Yeah. And um, they'd rather have two bucks than you know than twelve bucks. Right. Than no twelve bucks. So right. that's a mystery to me. It's a it, how they how they actually do the price changing on you. I um, will say. I will say for our uh, watchers and our listeners, trick with Audible, if you do have an account and you do use credits, remember any book that is less than $10 is cheaper just to buy in cash. In fact, I found a whole bunch of uh, Ray, Bradbury, Ray, Ray Bradbury short stories for under five bucks. I stocked up. There's all kinds of cool things you can find on Audible. Yeah, a lot of great stuff. 
there's a lot of ways to get free books too on mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. in fact i'm a um um i have a reviewer practice the reason i read so many audio audio books is because i read them in exchange for an honest review mm. and that's uh, uh another good way to um generate reviews for your audio books right to use one of the services that provide that because ACX gives you for every title 50 uh, coupon codes, 25 for the US, mm -hmm. 25 for UK. And wow. uh, those promo codes, you get a free copy of the audiobook. And um, uh, you use those for uh, reviewers to uh, get the word out. And that's mm -hmm. uh, another very useful tool. Very cool. And the money's great. I'm all about the money. That's, uh, that's all I can say. Do it just because, you know. Marty is a mercenary. I'm just a total mercenary. You know, drink coffee, make stuff up. People send you money. That's you awesome. Go. So um, I want to see all you guys have your stuff in audio because I want to hear it. Make that happen. Will do, my friend. Will do. Absolutely. So is that it for today? Anything else? I think that's it. You answered my questions. It's another final question.